APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu today meets with former President Olusha Gwabasanjo at his Abelkuta home in Ogun State. And the nation is thrown into darkness following the nation national union of electricity employees strike who had shut down services nationwide Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimbale in Abuja. We won't get tired until we get a solution. And we continue the countdown over the strike action by the university lecturers. It's now 186 days since university lecturers in federal universities in the country began the strike action, keeping students away from the classrooms. The standoff between the federal government and the university lecturers continue, and the students continue to be idle. President Buhari is giving a two weeks ultimatum which was last month, to the Ministry of Education to ensure the standoff is resolved. We understand that there was a meeting yesterday which ended in a deadlock. Nigerians are looking forward to the stakeholders getting their act together to resolve what has become a national embarrassment. The already bad situation of electricity in Nigeria has been compounded and worsened leaving Nigerians uh, in a hapless situation. The National Union of Electricity Employees, who had shut down services nationwide, has thrown the nation into darkness. The workers embarked on an industrial action today and withdrew their services from the Kaduna Regional Headquarters of the Transmission Company of Nigeria in line with the union's national leadership directive. Meanwhile, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Mr. Chris Ngea, summoned an emergency meeting with the union, the federal government has stated that it is holding discussions with the organized labor in order to provide a solution or resolution to the issues. The Minister of Power told State House correspondent today after the Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by the president that issues in contention centers on employment issues, which is largely under the purview of the head of service and not the Ministry of Power. Uh, I, what I've heard before I came in here, because we have been managing the situation since yesterday together with my colleague, the Minister of State, and that's the reason why he has not attended the, the, the FEC today. Uh, he, and uh, the Minister of Labor and the, the Head of Service, uh, they have not attended the FEC for that reason. They are uh, working together uh, having discussions with the, uh, the label uh, under the General Secretary uh, uh, Joe, Joe Jero. They are working since uh, trying to discuss the, the matters. It is not uh, that uh, uh, Kaduna Disco is on strike, but uh, they are trying to switch off the electricity uh, due to uh, the warning strike that they have been uh, undertaking since yesterday. In fact, we have not been able to go into our offices. The issues they have is not uh, particularly on uh, at, at having something to do with us, but together with uh, something to do with employment issues with the head of service, and uh, so that's the reason why they are now having that discussions. Well then, that was the explanation from the Minister of Power, and we wonder how soon this can be resolved so that the already bad situation does not get even worse. Let's tell you that state governors across the Federation have met today in Abuja to deliberate on issues relating to the state of the nation, health and the economy they've met today with the leadership of uh, under the leadership of the governor of the state and the chairman of the nigerian governors forum governor kaudi faemi 
Well, then we're still monitoring for you the situation in the People's Democratic Party with the internal issues being deliberated upon ahead of the start to the 2023 election campaigns. We, uh, we're talking to one of uh, the, uh, the board, uh, members of the Board of Trustees of the PDP, and one of the founding members of the party, that is, will be talking to us on how far with PDP are these all distractions can this also cause a major headache, a setback for the PDP? What is the solution? Plus, we'll also dig into what took Bolatinobu to meet um, Olusegun passenger in Abelkuta, the alliance and possible um, working together. We'll find out later. But let's have you with your political roundup stories. Governor Simon Lalong's apology over his comment on the Pope and his appointment as a DG of the Tinubu ABC campaign organization. The Catholic Archbishop of Joss, Most Reverend Matthew Audu, has told Governor Simon Lalong that the church has forgiven him over his recent comment on the Pope, saying his apology has been accepted. The former chairman of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State, Henry Ajomale, has advised members of the APC to work together to win the 2023 general elections. Mr. Ajomale made this comment at the APC executive retreat in Lagos. He says the victory cannot be won by one person, but through collective efforts. It's a joint effort if you want to achieve the aim in which the party vision stands up. The poor performance of the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State in the June governorship election has been generating ripples within the party, as a group of stakeholders has rejected former Governor Ayofayoshe as the leader of the party. The group comprising former governorship candidate of the party, Dr. Olusola Eleka, and all the big names in a communique blames the loss of the governorship election on Mr. Fayoshe, insisting his unilateral leadership style stands rejected. But most of the people that are clamoring for it now were against it. They thought it was not the best, that we had a leader, and that leader must be all in all. The Niger State's chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says all strategies have been put in place to ensure victory for all its candidates at both the state and national levels. The state party chairman, Mr. Tanko Beji, made this known while briefing journalists after meeting with the state working committee and 25 local government party chairmen at the party secretariat in Mina. The governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Cross River State, Senator Bassi Edit, has promised to carry everyone in the state along in his administration if elected as governor. He made the promise during his thank you tour across the northern part of the state for supporting him during the primary election. The vision is to secure, to make sure that we have a secured successful and egalitarian cross the state. And civil society organization Connected Development says it plans to deploy 20,000 independent observers across the country to monitor the forthcoming general elections. Addressing journalists in Abuja, the executive director of the organization, Mr. Hamza Tlawal, notes that the deployment is to ensure transparent and credible elections. Our campaign would also ensure that, one, we're able to get people out, you know, to go and cast their ballot. It is obvious that the recent court judgment, which seats the Ogun State PDP governorship candidacy to Mr. Shegun Shoumi, has not put to rest the governorship candidate tussle in the state, as Mr. Shoumi vows to fight the ongoing battle for the party's ticket to the end. Mr. Shoumi, who spoke confidently at a news conference in Abuja, says he believes he will again emerge as a PDP authentic governorship candidate for the state, even if his opponent chooses to approach the Supreme Court. Mr. Mr. Shomi had appealed an earlier judgment which favored his opponent, Mr. Oladipupo Adebutu, who was nominated by the PDP as its governorship candidate in Ogun State. However, on Monday, the Court of Appeal overturned the judgment of the lower court. And as Nigerians await the commencement of campaigns for the 2023 general elections, the Secretary of the APC Presidential Council, Mr. James Falike, says the challenges bedeviling Nigeria as a nation are surmountable. He was speaking in Abuja at the headquarters of the Campaign Council. While playing host to the APC National Integrity Movement, Mr. Falike he says the council is prepared to work with all interest groups for the victory of Senator Bola Tinubu as the next president of Nigeria. I can assure you that none of us here, by the grace of God, will be left behind.
Thank you so much, everyone. We're keeping uh, close tabs on uh, what is happening in the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party. Yesterday, we had a discussion what exactly is happening to this party, the rift between uh, the candidate, the presidential candidate of the party, Atiku Abubakar, and the governor of River State, Yin Samuike. There is being a committee to unite the House. Um, on the side of uh, the presidential candidate is uh, the governor of Adama State to chair the committee to reconcile the two parties. Tonight, let's take the conversation forward. What is the way out for the PDP? Is the party losing grounds even when the contest has not yet begun? Let's have uh, Chief uh, Olabodi George, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, one of the founding fathers, and a member of the People's Democratic Party Board of Trustees. He joins us live from Lagos. Thank you so much, Chief Olabodi George, and it's good to see you again. Um, uh, first and foremost, before we get deep into uh, the matters of your party, uh, uh, your very good friend, um, the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Bola Tinobu visited um, uh, the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo. Um, Olusegun Obasanjo, the, the former president who was a member of the PDP. I'm not sure he, um, he, that, that is still, uh, he's still a member of, he still has a membership of the PDP. But let me ask you, uh, you are also a Yoruba leader, a chieftain of the PDP. Now you've seen these two men, they are meeting behind closed doors. This means something politically, isn't it? What is your take on that? You know, <clears throat> thank you for having me, uh, Sheung. Now, um, this pertinent question you are asking, it's very interesting. Now, Baba Basunjo remains an enigma. He's an icon. And his doors must re remain wide open to all Nigerians. Uh, but I can confidently tell you, that where uh, truth matters on issues of the nation, he will not bend any rules to make sure he tells the truth to power. I don't know what Bola is uh, looking for or what his, uh, what his mission is, but I can tell you that uh, he will be ready and willing to tell him his uh, views on national issues. Uh, fortunately, Bola belongs to the ruling party. Uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to look at the state of the country, which is being managed presently by the members of his own party, the APC. Take any sector in this country. Are we doing well? Is this nation not drifting very badly? Is, is it in terms of economics? Is it in terms of security? Is it in terms of employment? Take an example of what you just mentioned in your opening speech, that the universities are still on strike, 180-something days. What, what, what is the full academic year itself? The Minister of Education, despite the fact that the President gave him a marching order that this should be resolved within two weeks. Here we are, middle of August. Our boys are still at home. Our girls are still at home. These are the future leaders in this country. What is going on? If a party that is there and uh, uh, that is supposedly given powers to manage the resources of this nation for the benefit of the people. Cannot find a solution to this. I hope Nigerians are watching. I hope Nigerians are listening. Because we have an opportunity to vent our minds in the next few months to decide who will manage this country. It is disgraceful. Whatever Bola is looking for in Baba's house, I have no idea. But I can tell you that where truth will be told, he will not miss his words to tell him. As a leader, as an icon, as a father, he must 
allow all kinds of characters to pay visit to him, to listen to his words of wisdom, to listen to his sense of reasoning, and I have no qualms about that. So I wish him, Bola, uh, the very let best. Let me uh, just uh, uh, follow up on what you have said. You're one that has not hidden your, I will call it, you've spoken in some kind of uh, disgust about your fear about Bola Tinubu becoming Nigeria's president. And for those who have criticized your statement, saying, oh, uh, Jibode Judge is just scared of uh, the capacity of a uh, Bola Tinubu and the fact that you cannot contest his pedigree mm. as a leader in uh, the Southwest, and of course, someone who had uh, held sway as a governor, two-term governor in Lagos State, and the reason why you are worried about it, and you are perhaps jittery, those are the words that are being used to describe your, uh, perhaps your feeling uh, towards Bola Tinubu, is that you think that Bola Tinubu will beat your party and your candidate, silly, in the coming election. You know, it is most interesting. What do you expect? What do you expect those who are lackeys on his part, on his party as members and the congregation that, that, that follow him like rats? What do you expect them to say? That's where they depend on their livelihood. That's where they gain their, their income. And so, you know, they are beclouded by the truth. You know, Telling the truth to power honors all those who stand by the truth. I, I don't think we have enough time to extray the state of legal state. Is it the economic state, the financial state, the general security of lives and property, the well-being of millions of children who are just roaming about the whole street. Look, it has nothing to do with me personally, but I am concerned because I was born here. I am a bona fide Lagosian. We knew what Lagos was like. And Lagos remains the commercial nerve center, not only in Nigeria, but in the whole of West Africa. What has this fellow done to us? I have asked a very simple question, and none of them has been able to answer it. Who owns the Alpha Beta Company? How much has the Alpha Beta Company st stolen from the coffers of our treasury in Lagos State? Now, who of those children, millions of them, milling around, local government by local government. What has been his input? What has he done to alleviate the pains of the people of the state? So when I listen to jokers talking, and he has done so much, two-term governor, and is there any governor that had been there that was not handpicked by him, number one? Number two, you see the beauty of this a, a process we are heading into now is the fact that we thank the government of the day for bringing and changing the procedure in the electoral uh, process of, an, of our country, Nigeria. You know, after the election in, in Oshun State, he was quick to discountenance and to disabuse, to say all kinds of things that is not working Results are now being screamed. They are screamed perpetually, instantaneously, as the votes are there. They are no longer carrying ballot results, sheets, from one location by hand, where he had gotten so swollen that he manipulates the results with his own uh, congregation and his colleagues. This time, the will of the people will be respected. The will of the people cannot be subjugated or subdued by any of his lackeys. 
the results will be affirmative. This is when you are now going to know whether he is really in charge of Lagos or not. Because all along, we've been shouting manipulations of results from the polling stations to the uh, uh, collation centers, even results being hand-carried from Lagos, from the remote areas of, of Nigeria to the collation center. That, that's a cake. And we have modernized. Nigeria is now joining other civilized countries in the world to say, yes, those who will be elected by the people of this country Touch, will uh, be before genuine, get into, honest, yeah. because the, the, the voice of the people the voice of the people will be respected and heard loud and clear. So forget about all this uh, shenanigans of, uh, of yesteryears and all the deceit and all the filthy things. Just one Chief, question Chief Judge, that he needs uh, to yeah, answer. So, uh, before I get into the internal Who owns issues Alpha in Beta? your party, do you even do you realize? Yeah, now, now, do you che, che, also, do no, wait? Yeah, do you realize that today, outside the federal government? Outside the federal government, the, the, the greatest debtor is Lagos state government. Who owns the Alpha Beta? How much is Alpha Beta company being paid monthly? How much does he take home as part and parcel of the Alpha Beta? What is going on? Everybody is pretending that that doesn't happen. And you now want to entrust the resources of this nation to a man, a man like that, a first-class clown, who has mismanaged the resources of our people uh, in Chief this Judge, state. I don't know if you can hear me now. Please. I just wanted to throw this it's and give joke. you an opportunity to clarify Let him this answer quickly. the question. Maybe in 30 seconds if you can. It's yeah. the fact that uh, part of what uh, criticism right. against you on uh, your comments on Bola Tinobu is the fact that for several years, as a leader of the PDP in Lagos, your party yes. has tried without luck to defeat Bola Tinobu's camp. And perhaps saying, oh, this is a personal uh, 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 war for, by uh, Bodejo against Bola Tinobu. You have an opportunity to clarify. If this is a personal uh, war between you and Bola Tinobu, and perhaps uh, maybe a grievance that you have not been able to beat him, in the governorship and the contest in Lagos State. You know, you, you. No, let me, I, maybe you, you I ahead, hope. Okay. Absolutely, okay. go ahead. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I have told you that the processes embarked upon since 1999 had been completely undemocratic, very archaic, very subjective, very, 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 very uh, 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 stupid. We had had elections from polling stations and people hand carry results sheets the collation center. You know what happens. One, once we get to the collation center, they would make sure that our own uh, observers were driven away. And he, he puts his own people there, they manipulate the results and tell you, go to the tribunal. But since the last three elections, the governorship election in Anambra, Governorship election in Ekiti, the governorship election in, uh, in Oshu State. We have modernized. We have modernized. There is no longer any need for a charade. We are now back on the same platform as the civilized countries, developed countries in the world. Our results, you can even key in into the results that they are streaming them electronically. No more interface of human uh, manipulators. So if you keep saying he has won, he has won, he won, he won that, he, let us wait. As long as the INEC remains 
above board now to do that, to, to make sure all the election results will be transmitted electronically, then you will see the voice of the people. You will see the actual comm co commitment of Nigerians to the people they want. What we have been doing is such a charade, absolute garbage, rubbish. And I'm saying now we thank God that it is still the APC government that introduced it and made sure that it was approved. We tried. When Baba was there, Baba Obasanjo, Professor Abu Iwu was the first who was trying to introduce the electronic transmission. But he failed. The members of the uh, National Assembly at that time rejected it. But now we are modernized. Yeah. We have moved to another stage in life. And let us see what yeah. will happen when we do this next set of election. That's all I'm saying. I, I have absolutely no qualms, no quarrels with this guy. But all I know is that everything he has said he owns, or his name is this, his school is that, is, is a bundle of lies. It, 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 it's a pity when you ask, simple question I've asked perpetually, who owns the Alpha Beta Company? Lagos State today is the next state in, in, in debt analysis to the national government. After yeah, federal judge, government yeah, depot, me, Lagos yeah, State is next. To, so what are we yeah, talking about with jubilating? Who is going to pay? Of the People's Democratic Who is going to pay? I would like to know, um, as a leader of the party and someone who has a very huge stake, looking at the fact that you are a founding member of the party, mm -hmm. Are you worried about the state of affairs? The election has not even started, and the party doesn't right. seem to have itself together to focus on the election. This is perhaps one thing that has bothered some of the members of your party. Mm -hmm. Coming from uh, mm -hmm. Governor Ian some week who says, PDP is on a self-destructive right. path. And he went further to say, a party that wants to win an election cannot on their own be mm -hmm. causing problems for themselves. How much of a bother is this for you? Absolutely. It is, it is a major bother, not only for me. Mm. So it is not only a bother to me. It's a bother to a lot of the committed, the elders, members of the upper chamber of the party. It looks like some kind of devil has entered into the midst of our party. But let me tell you something. Our party, we have the capacity to resolve our crisis. Our party, we have enough experienced leaders. We have committed leaders. We have the loyal leaders and followers who will sit and be able to handle and resolve this crisis once and for all. Fortunately, we have about a month plus about a week, about five weeks from now, before we commence the, uh, 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 the campaign. All my, all my appeal now is that Governor Wiki should cool down. Presidential candidate Atiku should also cool down because none of their ambition should be bigger and higher than the ambition of our party. We are appealing to, do, to both of them because there is no organization anywhere in the world that will not have crisis, but the capacity and the ability to handle the resolution of such crisis will be a measure or how developed or reliable or respectable that organization is. Uh, if you say you are, in a member, as a, you are a member of an organization and you don't have crisis, then it is not an organization. But from my experience and from my commitment to this party, we have people and we have started to work on it. It is just one more hurdle to cross. And we will be ready like Freddie 
for the battle to the 2023 election. Yes, sometimes when these things happen, you wonder, uh, is it mainly coming from our own people or are there some other unseen hands trying to further uh, expand or exacerbate the crisis so that we can mend ourselves? But let me assure the Nigerian electorate, we've been tested before. We have the capacity. We have the people. We have committed and experienced leaders who will tell all those groups to keep quiet, sit down, get into a room, lock the door, and we will surprise Nigerians that we will come out resolved, prepared to deliver our party <clears throat> to oh, the yeah. electorate. So, I have no doubt in my mind. The process is ongoing now. Uh, there are crises. Yes, they, have, they were supposed to have met on a Monday. Uh, at that level of the governors and their, you know, the lower level, they are still meeting. They are going to meet on this Friday. And after that, the uh, Board of Trustee, which is the upper chamber, the people vested with the dictum that once there are crises within the party, either with the executive versus the legislative or with the party arm, the board of trustee should call a meeting and resolve it. And who are the members of the board of trustee? People who have been tested, yeah. people who have who have the experience, who are committed. They are no longer hangling for Chief position. George, we are, we are so you can yet. look at anybody yeah, on their need to take and tell him the truth. Uh, then we will he come will, at the end of... And we will wrap up with yeah. you on this conversation. Solution okay. is perhaps some of your uh, supporters and members are looking for. But what would that be? Uh, we'll come back to you and right. get your closing thoughts on some of these uh, conversations. But we'll take a break, and everyone, and when we're done, what was the mission of Balatinobu in Ogun State to visit former President Odisha Gombas, the one man that he is criticized. Uh, Mr. Femi Fanikao, the former aviation minister, will be telling us more about that meeting and what it means for their party, ABC. Stay with us, the Tunubu overtures, and the consequences within the political structure of Nigeria. We'll be back, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome back to the conversation. Chief Olabode Judge, a founding member of the People's Democratic Party, a retired military officer and a member of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, has been talking with us from Lagos. Thank you so much, Chief Judge. Our closing question with you tonight is on the solution for the PDP in what has become a tough chew for your party to get out of, uh, especially the rift that is now so uh, blown up uh, between the candidate and the governor of River State. Now, that those who are calling for the resignation, uh, the ouster of Senator Yocha Ayu, and they're making reference to perhaps what we do not know exists. They say, in fact, there was a commitment that he will leave office should a northern candidate of the PDP emerge. Now, we're not very sure that that kind of document or that kind of uh, agreement was made. But leave that aside. The fact that he said, and he made a commitment in an interview he granted to a newspaper that he will, as a Democrat, step aside, should the party want him to, uh, if a northern candidate emerged from the party. Does this uh, give you a kind of solution? Is this a solution? Because this is one of uh, the grounds in which the weakest side allegedly are asking for a way forward for the party. All right. So, thank you. It's one of the major issues. You know, when the Founding Fathers designed this party, because, remember, this is the first political party in this country that is not regional, that is not tribal. It bears the full colors of Nigeria, from the swampy forest to the savannah region in the, country, in the north. 
they divided, our founding father divided Nigeria into six geopolitical zones. Because in the first republic, the majority had their way, the majority had their say, and the minorities were on just pure onlookers, both north and south. That created a lot of friction. So, in 1998, when these founding fathers, those who have experienced it, came together to say, listen, how do we resolve this? How do we prevent these khaki boys, these military boys, from ever coming back to government? They then decided that, look, let us divide Nigeria into six geopolitical zones. You know, these six geopolitical zones are not reflected in our national constitution. But they created it for peace. And they then went further to say there will be six top positions in the land. The president, the vice president, the, speaker, the senate president, the speaker, the secretary to government, and the national chairman of the party. You know what that did? They then related the party management with the legislative arm and the executive arm. So there was a synergy, and that every zone will go home with one of these top positions. If the president comes from the north, the vice president will come from the south, the senate president will go for, come from the north, the speaker will come from the south, the secretary to the government will come from the north, and the national chairman will come from the south. So three up, three down. After eight years, those positions in the north will come to the south, and those positions in the South will go to the North. Simplicita, he created that sense of belonging, that sense of oneness, the, 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 what you call the uh, 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 inclusivity in our party. So right now, when we had the crisis about when the, the positions of the party were zoned, and nobody mentioned the issue of where the presidency should come from. He created so much mayhem. And then they looked at it, and there was a zoning committee set up. Section 7, subsection 3F of our current constitution affirms that zoning and rotation will remain sacrosanct in our party. So never in the history of this party can a presidential candidate or a presidential uh, or a president come from the same zone as the chairman of the party. So Ayu himself was a, a assistant secretary to Jerry Ghana with the original first committee set up to establish this party. So he knows and all we are saying, for purposes of in in inclusivity, give us a position that we in the South will take home to convince our people that, yes, now the North has the presidential candidate. What are we going to use on the platform to convince the larger members of the society in the South that, yes, we have brought this back home? So it's a sine qua non. You cannot tell us that until after election, you want to convince the people yeah. they must win their hearts and minds to vote for our party. Inclusivity, yeah. so George, we're uh, totally uh, out of time, sir. camaraderie, yeah. moral suasion, these are, these are tenants okay. of our party. Yeah, uh, uh, it's a pity. But these are the facts. If we mm. don't do that, we will not be able to convince Nigerians, especially people in the South, to go. And I've told my friends, my brothers, All our right. friends Thank from you, the sir. North, yeah. that what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Imagine if it is from this side that it has happened. What, would they have accepted that? No. Please, let us reason. Yeah. No individual can be higher and be more committed to this nation than all of us together. If you are Mr. Hey, George, a, you we're get definitely obvious, Mr. B, obviously out of also time. Get Thank you so much. So you have that sense of tonight, inclusivity. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I appreciate it so much. And it's good to see you again. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yes, now I'm talking about the people, I mean, the All Progressives Congress APC, uh, where his presidential candidate, Bola Tinobu, held a closed door meeting with former President Olusha Gombasanjo at his presidential library residence in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital. The outcome of the meeting, which lasted for over two hours, was not made known as the presidential candidate declined an interview from curious journalists who were on the venue of the event. His visit may not be unconnected with the 2023 general elections where Mr. Tinobu is standing as a fly bearer of his party. He was accompanied on the visit by the Speaker of the House of Reps, Chief, uh, Mr. Femi Wajabiamela, Chief Bisi Akane, a former leader of the party in Uhuru Badu, a former EFCC boss, Chief Volusia Gwashaba, a former Ogun State Governor, and the Governor said, uh, uh, the Ogun State Governor, Mr. Dakwa Abedu, among other dignitaries. Despite non-partisanship status of uh, Chief Olusha Gombasanjo, that is assumed as a state man, the residence of the former president has become a matter of some sort for consultation and advice by politicians across party lines. And as soon as they left uh, Chief Obasanjo's house, they were done with that closed-door meeting. The APC presidential candidate and his entourage headed to the Moshud Abiola Stadium in the state, in Ogun State, uh, the state capital to the waiting hands of party supporters. Let's talk about the mission of Bola Tinubu to uh, Chief Olusha Gombash in just house. And I'm being joined by a chieftain of the APC, a former Minister of Aviation, Chief Femi Fanikaude. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Good evening. Thank you very much. For because uh, before we get into yes. why Balatunobu went mm. into Chief Obasanjo, who is your former principal, yes. um, I'd like you to react, uh, to give you an opportunity as a member of the APC to react to what Chief Judge said on your candidate and your right. party. Well, first of all, it's very clear that um, Chief Body George has some kind of personal axe to grind with um, Ashiwaju Balatunobu. And um, it, it really is, for me, tragic to see an elder statesman and a born, somebody I have immense respect for, uh, to stand on TV or sit on television and begin to use words like clown and uh, this, that, and the other against uh, a man that uh, has been a contemporary of his over the years. They may have had political differences, but to bring such personal animosity and angst into a political arena is something that gives me deep concern. I think he's obsessed. I think that he's virtually delusional. I think that his hatred for Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu has beclouded his judgment. And I think, frankly speaking, um, you know, there's nothing that Ashiwaju can ever do to appease or please people like Chief Body George. He's made up his mind that Ashiwaju is a demon. He's made up his mind that he will never support him. He's made up his mind that he will demonize him for the rest of his life. And that's okay, because it really doesn't matter to us. The most important thing for us is this, what the people think and what the electorate thinks and what they will do, not what Chief Bode George in his delusions and his obsessions uh, 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 you know, manifest in terms of his wording. But what about some of the issues that he has raised, the questions that he has asked tonight? Like what? What are the answers to them? Like, well, he asked questions like what? He said that the, the elections were rigged. He said that ever since 1999, Bola Tinumbu's elections and, AP, and the elections that parties belonging or which Bola Tinumbu led were rigged in Lagos State. So rigged in 1999, rigged in 2003, rigged in two 2007, rigged in 2011, rigged in, in, in 2015, rigged in 2019. And he's saying because there's a new electoral act, this time round, Lagos State will go PDP. The truth of the matter, and everybody knows, is that Lagos State will never go PDP. PDP itself imploded in Lagos State many, many years ago, never to be resurrected, as dead as a dodo. They will never resurrect. And no matter what he says, the answer lies in going to the field. Tinubu has defeated them every single election in Lagos State fairly and squarely, gone through all the due process, all the courts and so on and so forth, and continuously comes out on top, not just in Lagos, but in many other states in the Southwest. And that is something that you should give him credit for, even if you don't like his face. So I find it difficult uh, to sit here and listen to some of the things that this man has said. It's unfortunate. I think we should take our personal obsessions out of this. Let's stick to the issues. Let's be reasonable and rational and not come here and make absurd claims. He raised he, some he, issues yes. and he was asking questions. Yes. Yes. As a stakeholder, he's from Lagos State, yes. he's, a, he's a citizen of Lagos, right. and he's asking, Alpha Beta, 
yes. a tax collecting yes. agent right. in Lagos right. who owns it. He's asked that question. Yes. And he's also raised question over the debt burden of Lagos State. He's asking questions and he wants answers. Listen, he's perfectly entitled to raise questions and ask questions. But he appears to already know the answers. Why doesn't he venture the answers to us? These questions have been asked over and over again. As far as I'm concerned, it's inconsequential. What are the it's answers? To no, that? ask him to provide the answers. He's the one that raised no, the question. No, you should be able he, to no, get no, 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 no. I didn't come here Chief to come and talk about You're talking Alpha about Peter. Because these are the issues no, 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 no. that are being raised no, no, no. about let, your candidate. Let's you should be, be able let, to let, speak let, about let, it. Let's be very, very clear. I can tell you this for free. And really, it's a pity that I have to say this to you. I can tell you this for free. There is absolutely no... Uh, 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 issue of corruption or, or, or any issue of, you know, uh, malfeasance on the part of Bola Tinubu when it comes to Alpha Beta or when it comes to anything else. These things have been said over the years. Nothing has been proved. EFCC has not gone after him. ICPC has not gone after him. He has not been indicted by even the Obasanjo government or after the Obasanjo government when APC came in. All these years, same questions being asked. He knows the answers. Instead of asking questions, let him tell us what the answers are, then we'll take it from there, or what he believes the answers are, let him take it from there. It is wrong to continue to impugn the character of somebody that has done so well for his people in this nation and continues to rise. We're not talking about Bola Tinubu or Lagos State alone anymore. This man has emerged as the presidential candidate of the largest party in this country, backed by many governors in this country, millions of people in this country who see their hope and aspirations in him as a leader of the party, as our presidential candidate. And that alone should be respected. Instead of continuously going on about Alpha Beta, who owns Alpha Beta, who did this, what, the world does not begin and end in Lagos State. Lagos has done very well. Only a fool would say Lagos has not flourished since 1999, what it was then and what it is today. It has gone from strength to strength, and I'm very proud of the fact that I lived in Lagos for many years of my life. Look at Lagos today compared to yesterday. It's done exceptionally well. That is a given. So I think that we should focus on the whole country and raise issues that are pertinent to an election, not on who owns Alpha Beta. If he has the answer, let him provide it, then we'll take it from there. I know that the, uh, the campaign period will give room for sure. uh, more debate over this. Uh, I think it's, it was just um, okay for me to allow you to respond no, to no, some but, of these but, but, issues. There'll yes. be a lot of room, but l let's begin with some of the mm. conversations that are prepared for, uh, for you, mm. or with you. Uh, one being that, uh, as Femi Fanikayo, yes. someone who spoke bitterly sometimes, mm. and who spoke so um, uh, hard uh, about Bola Tinubu mm. as a person mm. and against the APC. Mm. How do you feel right now, morally speaking, speaking for the APC and Bola Tinubu? Nothing to do with morals. It's a question of choices. It's my choice. And my choice is that when I was in the PDP, and I was in the PDP for a number of years, I fought against those that were against my party. Now I'm no longer in the PDP, I'm in the APC. I will fight against those that are against my party. That is my nature. And I make these choices based on conviction and based on courage. It was very clear to me what was going to happen in the PDP. You ask me why, how come I've changed? It was very clear to me what was going to happen in the PDP. Look at their situation today. He was talking about a party that has been uh, de uh, bedeviled, that a devil has entered the party. I saw that devil Met, you know, two years ago, coming in, slipping in, creeping into their ranks, and I knew this was going to happen to them. They have imploded a situation whereby he's now in a party, or they are a party, which has violated its own party constitution by insisting on providing a northern presidential candidate. Secondly, a party that, despite the fact that it has a northern presidential candidate and a key leading figure in the South, would have won it, but they messed him up with the, uh, the party convention shamelessly, ensured a northern candidate came in and basically cheated him out of, out of that opportunity, and then they now have the effrontery to say the, the the chairmanship the national chairmanship of the party should remain in the north what type of party is that it's a sectional party a presidential candidate from the north a national chairman from the north a board of treaty of trustees chairman from the north and the two appointments they've made so far for uh, their presidential campaign uh, the two spokesmen are all from the north it's a sectional party so i sympathize but these are some of the arguments you've made against the apc well, well, you're someone who have so i mean very your good. party you've talked to I'm, spoken I'm glad, about religious I'm, I'm glad you issues let, 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 me, let, let me i'll take that in a minute but let me in fact you have said at some point that me, there me, was a demon and devil in the no, APC. no no this no let me let me take this step by step and I'll explain this to you. The fact of the matter is this, okay? Today, 
Let's talk about today, not yesterday. PD, APC has reformed itself and has become a different body. This APC... So the talk, devil let left the APC? Let me tell you... The, well, the you devil you saw... No, 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 no. But definitely it's been exercised, and I'll tell you why. And it's proved. I'm not just saying it. At the convention that we had, it was the APC Northern Governors that insisted that the party, the, 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 sorry, the presidential ticket should go down south. They insisted on a power shift. A situation whereby even some of us were supporting northern candidates because PDP had come up with the northern. They said, no, we will give power to the south, we will let it shift in the name of equity and decency on all that is good. That is a party that is reformed, that has a new mindset, that, 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 is in, that has decided that it wants national unity, unity and cohesion and puts it before northern interests. PDP has done the opposite. So if you're talking about demon of the past in APC, and there were demons in the past in the APC, those demons left long ago. The party that's played with the demon today is the PDP, and I'll tell you why. Like I said, all those things I just said, couple it with, with this as well. Even at the very height of their effrontery, that they have cheated, Wike cheated all the Southerners in the party, even at that height, they are still saying that nothing will change, party chairman will not step down, and so on and so forth. What will they do when they come to power, if they come to power in this country? So I think that he's absolutely right. I agree with Chief Body George. A demon, a devil, has entered the PDP. But where I disagree with him is this. That demon and that devil will never leave the PDP. It will not leave the PDP. It's in the grip of the power of the powers of darkness. And I'm assuring you of this, that by the time we go to a campaign and election, we will expose them even right. further. Now, it isn't ironic what we've seen as an aberration. Uh, the issue of religion in politics is what is playing out in the party that you support now. Well, How do you defend first that? First of all, I wouldn't say, when you say aberration, this is a very weighty word. Listen, the, 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 the most important thing, the greatest danger to national unity and cohesion, as far as I'm concerned, and we've been saying this over the years, is a situation whereby power does not shift to the south after eight years of a House of Fulani man ruling this country. It was a given. In the interest of the whole country, we must have a power shift. That was the target. That was the most important thing. And the APC decided to do that, and they've come up with a southern candidate today. Now, the choices that southern candidate makes are the choices that he is comfortable with. Now, obviously, there are issues with that. Obviously, there are issues of, uh, with the same... Uh, a same, uh, same faith ticket. Obviously there are, and any Christian that will tell you that he's particularly happy with that, then seriously speaking, cannot be a real Christian. But as far as I'm concerned, this is an, it's not an issue of, uh, this is simply an issue of choice and political expediency. You are, the, you are the one that's talking about how some elements in the country had wanted to Islamize the nation. That is precisely the point I was That's making. why I said, I mean, you point. are no, no, no. describing it as we an aberration in the past. Yeah, you have, no, let me you, take you it have said some this thing. No, 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 let me record. take it step by step. Yeah. We spoke about fulanization. That has been thrown out of the window now because power has been shifted to the south by the APC, the party we accused of that. Secondly, we spoke about Islamization. Now, look at it again, and let's look at this closely. Since I joined the APC, I realized, like I said earlier, that things have completely changed. It's simply not like that. A situation whereby in this country today, we have 20, no less than, I believe it's 22. Um, I think I'm right in saying 22. Uh, Christian governors in this country. A situation whereby the whole of the Southwest has a Christian governor, except for Oshun State, which has now changed, which has now changed, because we have a Christian governor there as well now that's coming in. A situation like that tells you clearly that this country cannot be Islamized, and neither is our party, the APC, interested in that. What is happening, really, as far as I'm concerned, is this, that we have reformed, we are moving forward, same faith ticket is something that was a challenge, but we looked into it. I prayed about it, I consulted, I spoke to Kashi because all along, my position has been, it all depends on who the vice is. I said this on your program before the, con uh, before the co uh, convention, that if it came to that, it depends on who the number two is. It's not about his faith, it's about the individual. And if it is an individual that's a Muslim that right. I can live with, I'm prepared to live with that. So, and I did precisely that. I spoke with this man. I spoke with Tinubu. Let me just say this, because it's the point you raise is important, and it's a fair, fair question you ask. You talk about Islamization. The candidate himself returned schools to the missionaries in Lagos, something that had never been done before. The candidate gave land to so many of these mega churches in Lagos State when he was governor, and since that time they've been granted they've been granted um, uh, uh, licenses and uh, uh, land to you know to build churches. Go to the north. 
the, the, the vice, that is Shetima himself, the vice presidential candidate, I met him for over three hours we discussed. I looked into the man's eyes, I raised a number of pertinent questions which I needed to be satisfied. And I was satisfied with his answers. He has built more churches in Borno State than any other governor before him and since that time. Uh, and he has won the confidence Chief of many Chief we need to close in just about so 30 So the issue of Islamization no longer arises. 30 or 40 seconds we need to close. And the first question, if you can do that in 15, 10 seconds, is the mission of Bola Tinobu to OBJ. What is that? Well, I think well, it's, it's very clear that, that he's consulting. He has gone to meet a man that many of us consider to be the father of the nation. He's gone to meet a Yoruba elder. He's gone to consolidate his base. He's gone to explain his mission to him. And I sincerely hope that our, fr our, pres our former president and our father will reciprocate this gesture by supporting him. We need a solid base in the Southwest right. for this coming election. And we need and to I close on this that. note. We need to close on this note. Is it an ironic also, and how can Nigerians listen uh, to this kind of conversation, knowing full well that Abola Tinubu has said in the past, quote, Obasanjo is the greatest election rigger. His time has expired. Those are some of the words linked to Abola mm -hmm. but he's gone to meet that same person he described years ago. And, and, and President Obasanjo has said worse things about Abola Tinubu, both on, on the, on, in his books and also on television. We say these things sometimes. It does not mean we'll be enemies So Nigerians life. should not believe what politicians No, no, say. Niger Nigerians can believe what they like. The most important thing is that whatever anybody says at any given point in time, they reserve the right to retrace their steps and say something else based on conviction. And I don't think that, uh, pre uh, I don't think that, uh, that the gentleman that you're quoting there would say the same thing again, that Ashwaju would say the same thing again about President Obasanjo. Otherwise, All he wouldn't right. be where he is today. Chief Emi Fanika, the chairman of the APC, a former aviation minister. Thank you so much indeed for <laughs> coming tonight. Much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye for now.